Uh, unmute your mic, uh, Patrick. Uh, thanks for joining the uh, webinar tonight with Patrick and I on developing a culture of uh, digital citizenship. Uh, nice to see that we're willing to devote that time the, uh, this afternoon uh, to what's going to improve our schools and the learning for our students um, and our school boards. Uh, as we go through today, as many of you have already started uh, completing the uh, Who Are We uh, survey, I've been tracking the results, so it's a, a pretty good uh, geographical sampling that we've got. Uh, most important for uh, Patrick and I when we were putting this workshop together is we wanted to get a good measure and gauge on what was the level of uh, tech use or familiarity uh, with some of the tools that we could be talking about today. So the emergings and the proficients are really, really good to see. Um, as we get into today, and what's really good for you is several of us have included our Twitter handles on that document. And uh, on our next slide, uh, and you can download all of this as well, um, we're actually giving you view rights to the Google Sheets that created out of this. So you'll be able to uh, reach out to anybody that shares uh, the same special interest that you have, uh, but definitely encourage you to uh, add those Twitter handles to your uh, PLN so that you can grow that even further with some of the people uh, that are uh, here today and uh, will be participating with us. So it's a really good way to just keep learning with all of us around in our community here. Patrick, I'll pass it off to you for your first introduction. Great. Thanks, Greg. Uh, so as you can see on the slide, uh, that's Greg and I. And uh, the interesting thing about the, uh, the photo that uh, is up there for me is that uh, it's a lesson for, for me and a lesson for all of you out there uh, not to take um, selfies with someone else's uh, mobile phone. Uh, I don't know how long ago I took that, that picture, but it was with, with Greg's phone when he wasn't looking. And um, so this is a cautionary tale uh, about using someone else's uh, cell phone to take photos of yourself. Um, but uh, I am the, uh, the principal of innovation um, here. I learned a valuable lesson that same day. It was in board. November, uh, Patrick, in uh, Ottawa. Which uh, uh, I'm never going to lend my phone out to great Patrick job. again. Thankfully, it's, uh, it was only that interesting, that he took, and um, I didn't try to get anything else to be when I wasn't looking. Uh, I, uh, I get the quite wonderful of, opportunity uh, of being uh, vice principal for Peel Alternative what, School uh, here uh, in Peel District my School job is day -day 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 uh, In my I've role, we look after with, our traditional uh, alternative an school. Amazing group of people. Uh, that's our, and, uh, essentially, we uh, have grade 10 uh, through 11 and 12 you know, courses there. A lot of uh, people like three different what I do to sites, technology, uh, but a lot of our work is about. I also get the opportunity to also uh, help and oversee with our safe schools well program as, here in uh, Peel. Fresh start, so we call it. So we we're really look looking forward to a lot of today work and working with Greg at risk, or should say, and, uh, seeing what uh, at the same time we also look with. after several other alternative programs for students with uh, um, most social emotional health issues and needs. And uh, we are always fighting here at uh, Peel Alternative School uh, to try to provide our students with more than your typical alternative education and pushing them into the areas of moving ahead and developing the skills that they're going to need uh, to be successful as we uh, move even further into the 21st century. Um, thank you. I don't know how many people uh, did participate uh, in the previous uh, webinars. Uh, I know uh, several of the uh, uh, forerunners before us did some really good content, some really good examples were used. We've switched things up a little bit in uh, using some of the Google Forms and everything to do some of our sharing and reflection and uh, work to do afterwards. Uh, we've tried to build on uh, the first three that were presented. Uh, the strategies to promote uh, collaborative inquiry was uh, really interesting and Patrick and I got to take a look at those uh, files because Ben was uh, very helpful and uh, shared them with us. So we're trying to change it up and not duplicate for those that have been through all the sessions. Um, some uh, similarity between uh, us and the second one with uh, using tech to develop 21st century competencies. That's it within the students that we're showing how we can model that kind of uh, skill development as a leader in our schools for our staff and building our uh, digital uh, citizenship and our digital footprint. 
And of course, then uh, the third one was building teacher capacity and technology. And a lot of that's going to be covered today as we go through the modeling with you and how we're going to uh, demonstrate what are some of the really good tools to use in building your footprint and that being a positive digital citizen. Uh, to keep in mind with our title today, uh, realistically, we have uh, going to be focusing on uh, your digital footprint and digital, digital citizenship. But as we go through and we talk about the, the tools uh, as one thing, and they kind of surround that whole footprint and they make that footprint up, what we're really talking about is the development of key skills that are going to last beyond those tools. So even if you look at some of the icons that are there, some of them are still current, some have already uh, change to move on. So we want to really work on how do we develop the skills, use one app in, in present time, and then how do we use that skill again when the new version or new and more improved apps uh, come up as we go. So that's one of the key things that we need to uh, take away today. Patrick, uh, over to you. Sure. I'm just putting the link to that survey if people haven't had a chance yet to, um, to add in their um, where they're from and their um, level of uh, kind of interest. One of the things, just put the link uh, in the chat here, so you can have um, a look at two people driving the presentation, so we'll have some of those so pickups as we go through. The webinar throughout. description is uh, pretty much right out of the, the, the uh, as brochure as well. and what, uh, um, as far as the, uh, what Greg and I had kind of looked at doing. One of the things you're going to hear about today, I definitely uh, pulled out a couple for over the today. course of the next um, kind of half hour to 45 minutes. Take a look at what there are numerous starting where people are. I just wanted to start taking them as far as you can take them building relationships and developing people. And so while um, Greg and I do that in our day-to-day -day work, uh, we're going to um, attempt to do that. It's really easy to take a look uh, at how you can well. recognize so some of the accomplishments. If you haven't had a chance to fill up uh, that staff, form, uh, go ahead and click on that. Building just by using some of the tools. And I just so thought we'll as I was going to take that up really, really, really quickly, a little bit about um, the, uh, one of the best ways you can do is simply walk into somebody's for today. classroom. And all you're going to do is you can take pictures, you tweet out what they're doing, you talk about so what the students ben, are doing. You can move on and even the simpler next slide. than that is that on our next slide, it's just right, you do have that. no Sorry. idea how right. impactful so, uh, it is when you see a, a couple, just a three simple goals for today. As a teacher, we want to, as a student uh, doing work. We want to our not only our explain or, or talk about what digital citizenship looks like in 2016, or what citizenship looks like. Twitter we want to co-create some of that, that with the people that are online today. To the learning environment. Um, uh, we've got several again, I mentioned uh, on Twitter as well. It's amazing about meeting people how many times they, they take the, the effort to go through uh, and, and actually in this case, and it's not like just your community, community uh, things it's that, uh, uh, staff the learners need to come back around and oh wow, they're actually watching what we're doing. They know what's going on in the classroom. So that has it's one of those cases where we have all these great strategies that 
also we too, expect is, teachers uh, to actually with getting kids. that professional development uh, going. And sometimes we forget that, that there are also we great have to strategies do, uh, for us to be used uh, as our own leaders. schools. And I think about so that here. No one in our I may be pushing the agenda in my school, but sometimes uh, it's just uh, well, I can't guarantee I'm always going to be here. But I want to work on that building capacity. And just by modeling what's going on, I just figure out where they are. That climate in place, the culture, more importantly, that's going to encourage staff to really try some of the new practices that we've been talking about. The last one there, the last school was and just to be, uh, uh, good merger with our uh, with your help build a resource as well uh, tools that we can all use uh, some more simple help, ones uh, as you go through when you're talking about developing uh, the organization uh, some citizens. really good uh, key takeaways uh, here for us aren't the, the the hardest thing as you go through uh, I always think to myself that probably the greatest tool for improving schools has nothing to do with technology what we're talking about is relationships and the culture in your school. So when you look at uh, uh, culture of digital citizenship, that's truly what you're doing. And you're going to create that collaborative nature uh, for your school where uh, staff are going to jump on board with initiatives that you have. Um, realistically, some of the tools we're showing you today, it's really going to be able to look, if you look at number two, uh, provide staff the opportunity to contribute and give input into initiatives or new directions that are going on. Uh, in our school board, we're looking at doing our uh, 21C uh, teaching and learning revisioning, and we've reached out to all employee groups uh, using various different technology to get input and opinions that way. Um, number three, uh, one of the power, most powerful impacts we have is that reaching out of outside of our own school to the school community. We're creating windows into our hallways, windows into our classrooms, and that's allowing our community, our trustees, our parents, uh, even some uh, local MPs and, and counselors are seeing what's actually happening uh, inside our schools. And even here today, uh, as far as the fourth point on the slide's concerned, no one here in this chat room needs to understand how powerful it is when you start engaging in this and the collaborative skills you develop as you make these connections, whether you're using uh, Adobe Connects here, Go, or Microsoft Link, tons of information, tons of good benefit for our learners as we go through. So those are some of the basic connections that you get to the leadership framework out of what we're going to be doing uh, today. There you go, Patrick. And Greg. Yeah. So what we were uh, talking about as we, we started talking about uh, tools and what was available um, was really talking about pedagogy first and, and what's the learning that we have to have happen. And as it applies to our workshop uh, webinar here today, what we're really looking at is how are we going to change the learning in our schools? And even more realistically, how are we going to change the working? How are we going to use those tools and those skills to change what we do inside our schools and our classrooms and our school boards? And the one thing, as far as it goes, before you pick any tool, we'll get into this in a little bit more in depth later, it's what is the actual impact they want to have, and then start thinking about what tool you want. Don't find that cool tool that exists out there and say, I want to use this, and then try to figure out how to use it in your school afterwards. Set the purpose first, and this is where it comes from the uh, George Kuros quote is, don't worry about what devices you should buy, what is that learning that you want to have happen? And that's exactly what Patrick and I did as we went through uh, designing this webinar today. What's the learning that we want to have? What kind of opportunities do we want to present? And then we went back in and started talking about the tools. As you come down to it, uh, we talked about the digital footprint uh, image earlier on today. 
we're not really talking about tools. What we're talking about is acquiring those important skills and competencies that are going to make us as successful educators and our students successful in our courses that they take with us in school and the classes we have with them and make them even more successful once they leave our buildings. One of the key things we're going to talk about here is managing change that happens around the world today. Um, very good case in point, just as an example, uh, here on my school board, I think about some of the major changes that we've done. Uh, I remember back when they switched us from uh, Outlook 2010 to the Outlook web app with very little care, uh, practice, concern, support provided. It was an uproar, a uh, simple little thing, and uh, staff were upset, emails weren't getting sent, things like that. And then uh, when we switched from, I think it was uh, Windows XP to Windows 9, uh, 7, the major concerns that happened and how upset people were because we didn't actually take on those skills. And as they started working on it, just this past uh, January the 25th, we switched and updated our intranet here on the board. And at that point, we had had enough change that we'd grown accustomed to it and all the staff and students were able to actually handle uh, that switch over. And it wasn't the same uproar and upheaval in our practice and our board as we developed those skills moving forward. So the more change we work with, the better we're going to be able to adapt to it later on. Um, as we start gearing up and talking about the context for today, um, what we try to do is set it into um, things that have been going on. And we've already started talking about how important the skills are, even more so than the tools. Thanks, we're Greg. just thinking about all this stuff that's going when on. You're talking you've seen about, the four C's. Um, you might see at a workshop where they talk three C's. The, the you've got six about C's. Connecting you've got to your, your uh, community. Six C's to deeper learning. Um, uh, there's several frameworks you know, that are around. These, uh, the framework of the century where they've actually identified in our key skills that we need to have. So uh, can tell the story of what's happening in our school boards or in our, in our school what, district. Uh, needs to look like in and our I think we need to be and then mindful how are we that we take there, those opportunities to, uh, to, 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 to tell our story because if we don't, then we know someone else is going to tell the story for us. And so it doesn't always have to be on the school website or on the blog or on Twitter. It could be in the hallway or in the playground, wherever they are. And the slide that's up there now kind of speaks to what I I was talking about earlier. Clarity for us provided, um, that if you're uh, a school community, until, uh, as we started uh, uh, one of the uh, uh, there's a large and, uh, group of parents who are, out, are not uh, going to see your uh, message on, on Twitter or on the website. Uh, you may need to find them in the playground or in the hallways. Um, you know, there's there's lots of things to do at the beginning of the school day, and lots of competing uh, interests. They're looking for the principal in the morning. But uh, if they really want to find you, uh, they can find you on the schoolyard just as easily as they can find you in the office. So uh, taking those opportunities, I think, is, is huge to, uh, to meet your community where they are. Did it again, Greg. So Patrick highlighted um, the collaboration, communication, uh, global citizenship uh, for you. We'll kind of follow that order. Um, we thought because our whole purpose was uh, uh, the context was global citizenship as our title, it made sense to uh, kind of end that as our last competency to look at. Um, it doesn't really matter. As you see, as we go through and talk about collaboration, what you're really doing is establishing your footprint there and communication the same way. So we'll get to, through to that as we go. We just provided a good summary from the document for you, um, what they're actually looking at for that competency, uh, for that skill area. 
So even when it came to collaboration, we're talking about uh, the participation in teams, learning, contributing to a, a group of uh, uh, others, learning from others, uh, co-constructing knowledge, and that's what we're building on today through some of our activities. Um, the various roles that you're going to do, flipping back and forth, all that uh, as far as communica uh, collaboration goes. Communication, uh, as we all know, uh, it's flexible context. Uh, we uh, I'm not very good at it, but the French and English, uh, something I definitely need to work on. Uh, also, as well, it's uh, communication. I got this from an ESL teacher a long time ago. Uh, communication has two forms. It's our in communication, our listening, what input we have, reading, and then it's also communication as far as our outputs concerns. We need to consider uh, that as well. And then, of course, as we go into the global citizenship, uh, how are we contributing to the, the, the digital community online? How do we contribute locally, uh, internationally, that type of idea? Um, what are we doing for uh, the community? And what are we doing to create that uh, uh, positive digital footprint for ourselves? And that's important to do. Uh, Patrick already mentioned about telling your story. So what really we're talking about today is, yeah, we can be telling our school story, but at the same time, we're building our own story. We're going to be the authors of that, not letting someone else do it for us. Thanks, Greg. So the um, the document that's on the screen now is the uh, the 21st century competencies document that Greg's talking about, and it's um, it it came out to some of us by surprise that it actually uh, arrived uh, on my desk one day and, and pleasantly surprised to see it. But uh, the questions I'm getting from school principals are, um, what's the rollout of this document looking like, and how does it how does it connect to what we're already doing, or is it going to be a completely new uh, initiative? So if you uh, if you haven't seen it yet, um, feel free to click on that link and uh, find yourself a copy. Uh, but what we're going to be looking at today, Greg mentioned that um, we're we're looking at the webinars that came before us and thinking about the ones that are coming next. So Greg and I have kind of made a decision that we're going to look at three of the competencies today. We're going to look at uh, communication, uh, collaboration, and global citizenship. And we'll, we're going to look at those in the context of how they impact the work of the leader. And I'll put the link back for you there. There you go. Uh, you can also find it on Edugain. So if you just search um, 21st Century Competencies uh, Ontario, it's the first uh, hit you're going to get, and you'll, it'll come up to um, the Edugain site, and then you can, uh, Greg's put the link in there. Terrific. So we're going to look at those three today, and then uh, in our May webinar, we're going to have a look at the, at the second three.
Uh, Patrick, did you want to share your screen or would you like me to get Ben to uh, share my screen? So uh, just as you go there, I've uh, opened up the documents uh, that are being created as you're completing the Google form. Uh, On this um, slide, you're going to see the link Patrick to the form. So we're going to take a few minutes, a, a, and a Greg and I uh, will uh, really, just let you uh, have like some the, think uh, time Plus uh, and some time to fill I've out the form. If you click on that link, it's going to open a Google uh, form, and it's going to ask you a couple um, of questions. It's going to take a look at. Is uh, the tool you're thinking of, um, twice that they're now the Google you, do you want to talk about how you use for collaboration, uh, or communication, or citizenship? Uh, game changer for us. Then it's going uh, to ask you to plot it on uh, that continuum, and I can uh, uh, flip back to that, uh, uh, that slide once uh, uh, people have got the link. Uh, and then it's going to ask you what the name of the tool is and how you use it. And so uh, what we're actually doing by filling out that form, we're creating a collaborative kind of crowdsourced document of resources that we can all take away at the end. Around uh, how just we take a look tools. at our global citizenship so and building some the, uh, of that. The link to the form uh, is now in the chat, so I'm going to put it I've back to the been progression. Personally, a bit more than I so we're going to give you a few minutes and, uh, to open up that uh, form video and uh, your add your tools. About, what I'd really uh, like is if you have a couple, uh, feel free to fill out the form multiple times. The other thing that Greg and I spoke about earlier when we were talking about this session was. There's multiple uh, entry points for every tool for every person. So uh, we're all, uh, you may, if you're going to, say, uh, use Twitter uh, for this example, you may put yourself uh, in uh, uh, you know, developing or proficient, but then you find another tool that you're just starting out with, and you might put that one in. So feel free to add a couple of different tools to the different categories. We're going to give you five minutes or so just to do that. And while that's happening, we'll put up the results page so you can have a look at what's coming through in the document. So I'm going to uh, just go back to the uh, chat now and into our uh, Adobe Connects and back to our presentation. So you can keep, as we go throughout here, uh, Patrick and I are going to be sharing some of our uh, tools that we like to use as well and thought would have a, a pretty good impact for you. Um, so keep uh, uh, going through as you come up with new ideas as we're talking. You can add to that form as we continue our uh, presentation. Um, I know we've talked about the tools and we've already kind of mentioned it. Uh, is it all about the tools? And on the left on the screen right now is uh, uh, applies for students and applies for our teachers and for us as well. Uh, yeah, technology is great, but as far as the mix of what we need to do in learning, it's all about, uh, this says Legos and scented markers and handstands and having fun and books. It's about the balance. And I always talk about technology is great, but it's the right mix. And you have to use it in the right avenue, in the right area at that given time when it is the uh, best thing that's available for you to use. Uh, the image on the right, um, you've probably seen this around before. Uh, Bill Ferreter out of uh, the United States uh, uses the Twitter handle uh, Plug Us In. Uh, had designed it initially, and then a collaboration with him and George Kuros uh, really kind of set on it. And what it's good for us to take a look at is what do you want your leaders, the people that are in this uh, webinar tonight, to do with technology? So, yeah, the good answers are over there, and that's kind of what we're talking about. Use Google Apps, write a blog post. Um, create a spreadsheet, develop a website, all those little things right there, that, that's good. There's nothing wrong with it. What they said is here's an even better way how to push something forward. Um, build relationships. And that's what we're doing here today with the, the one sheet. Uh, connect with communities uh, around the world. Um, Thanks, Greg. I've connected with Bill, uh, the other thing I, I think uh, too is uh, bringing him in. If you have colleagues that aren't here today that you know might be interested in supporting that document, time. feel free to send Definitely. them that link and they and can fill out the form our and build that document with our school board. Um, it's to make definitely it even that compressing, that flattening of your organization, and that communication chain opening up and really uh, essentially harnessing the power of your organization. And we're starting to see that in our revisioning work that we're doing with our school board. Um, and the last thing I'll, I'll point out is not to read through the whole list is it is it's a culture changer and that's what you want to do is to start changing the culture of uh, the school that you're working in. 
So uh, just some questions for you to consider as we start looking at the tools today. Um, as we've already said in previous Thanks, Greg. And uh, the other thing that uh, Greg and I have been speaking about in, in planning for this webinar was the idea that you can produce a, a document or something for your staff or for students on the acceptable way to use any single tool. But what you're doing there is you're, you're basically going to have to redo that when the next tool comes along. So instead of building, um, you know, uh, kind of rules and, and procedures to kind of vet tools uh, for one specific tool, uh, like Twitter or any other one, you know, coming up with um, a list of questions to ask yourself before you use any tool so that it doesn't matter which tool you're looking at, you're being critical of it before you start. Um, so the first tool we want to share uh, is Doc Appender. And so for those of you that have used Google Forms before, um, you will have noticed that the results from the Google Form you're filling out now uh, are different from uh, the ones that you're seeing um, that Greg showed in that they are in a Word document and not in a, a Google Sheet. And so what DocPender does is it takes your Google form and that first question that you answered, whether it's cooperation, communication, or citizenship, as soon as you answer that first question, the form and DocPender know that they're going to put the subsequent information onto a document with that name. So if you clicked communication, as soon as you answer the rest of the questions and hit submit, it knows to take all that information and put it on a Google Doc called communication. And same thing for citizenship and, um, and collaboration. And so what uh, we've got schools and teachers using DocAppend for is create a form with all the students' names in it and a doc for each student. And so what happens is as soon as a teacher selects Greg from the list, maybe checks off one of the learning skills and then makes a comment, 
instead of it going into a sheet that you can sort, it actually sends that information to a, uh, a Google Doc with Greg's name on it and keeps all of Greg's info in one document that then you, you can then share with other classroom teachers or with the parents. So Doc Appender is a great tool. It's not difficult to use. Uh, lots of info online on how to use that. So when we go back to see the, um, the documents again, you'll be able to see uh, what that generates. So why don't we uh, go and have a look at, uh, if you let us share the screen again, Ben, we'll, we'll show uh, the collaboration document. Let's see if we can pull this one up. Collaboration. Okay, everyone, so what you're looking now is this, uh, the Google Doc that I was talking about. Um, and when I built the document, all I did was put the title bar across the top with the logos and wrote the word collaboration. And then I saved that document in the same folder that the form is in, called it collaboration. And then Doc Appender did the rest. So it creates the table, puts the headings in, and as people start to fill out the form, it automatically starts to add all the data into it. So this, this form will continue to grow every time some, someone submits a form and uses um, collaboration as the answer to the first question. Okay, thanks Ben. If you could go back to the, uh, the Connect session. Greg, do you want to talk a little bit about the two uh, behemoths? I could talk about that now if you want, because that's uh, kind of a good fit. So what uh, what Greg's talking about is we took our uh, school learning plans. Uh, instead of it being a, a static document that uh, you know you fill out twice a year and uh, and then they get either emailed or couriered off to the superintendent, we built all of our school learning plans in Google Drive. So what we did is we created a, a template for the school learning plan and a template for um, the learning stories. And the learning stories are the, the documentation of the learning of all the people that are in uh, collaborative inquiries across the system uh, and in schools. But the, the key features are that um, they're all accessible to everyone. So every uh, teacher, every administrator, superintendent can see everybody's school learning plan and they can also see the uh, documentation of the learning of every inquiry that's going on in the system so if I'm part of an assessment inquiry in Aurelia and I want to see what the group in Bradford is doing I can go and look at their learning story um, and what we ask is that if a, if a teacher or a principal is in someone else's learning story what they're looking for is either uh, posing a probing question 
to kind of push the thinking of the group uh, or to ask for clarification, or they are offering some kind of support or resource. So they can go in, read the documentation of what that group's learning, and ask them a question or offer a resource. And so it's really made the, the whole uh, teacher learning um, visible to everyone and um, really well, helped I, because about, people aren't doing things well, in isolation anymore. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail about um, that right now. The other thing we've noticed too is the way people document their learning. If it's, if it's only for um, myself or the, the group of teachers I, I'm working with, I write a certain way. But if I know I'm documenting my learning and it's for a wider audience, it changes the way I document. So Google Apps is really, uh, for us anyway, uh, kind of transformed the way we do our school learning plans and teacher learning in general. Yeah, that's really good. I was just actually looking at Patrick at the communication. Uh, someone's even mentioned Evernote, and uh, a good game changer is just, uh, uh, it's in a lot of uh, software now. It's just the simple speech to text that's available for every single person in your school board. Never mind just special education students using Kurzweil and Dragon, but something that's very easy to use. So that's a really good feature that someone's mentioned as well. Uh, really good for uh, French and English language learners. So that's a, a thank you for sharing that resource. I'd forgotten about it. So go ahead, Greg. So I was, I guess uh, the, the plan too, and, and yeah, as Greg mentioned, we're, uh, we're kind of running out of time here, but the tools for communication, again, we were planning on coming back to that to so see what's in there. So as we get in, in and we're but not going to cover has access to click all of it right link, here. Everyone uh, at their own time, maybe after the tool. webinar and see what I don't know how many workshops and people talk about. The hope is that, that those three documents will just grow over the next kind of little while as people put more and more Twitter And of course, I'm sure Patrick would mention some of that there. Um, as well, and I can't remember if Patrick and I uh, met face to face first or uh, met on Twitter first, but I remember it was uh, one of his uh, innovation resource teachers had uh, put out um, uh, a question on Twitter about what's the actual value of Twitter. And I was kind of following along with the hashtag that was there, and then uh, Patrick had uh, just tweeted out really quickly uh, Twitter's like an awesome machine, you put stuff out there, and people make it. And, more, and also sorry, when awesome we work. talk about the use so of Google Forms and Dockerpender, really um, that is where talk about uh, teachers on. are getting the, kind of the most mileage out of it. They are out really building that form with it, a couple of clicks. They can pick a student, pick a learning skill, and then click on a text field and dictate into their mobile device or their iPod or their iPad. A brief statement about um, an observation or a conversation. One of the ways that, uh, that Twitter helps with us is instructional and as soon as leaders. Hits submit, it's and in I have a history philosophy Google background. Doc, and, and I know if I walk into that my kind of uh, MHF, uh, my using that voice to teachers text classroom is, uh, and say, I am your tool. instructional leader and I'm here to help you, I know they're not thinking I'm Yoda and I'm the pleasant one. They're looking at me like I'm from Darth Vader um, and the dark side. And I don't know what's going on. Uh, this actually happened uh, um, with a, a math resource. And uh, I'm just going to show you uh, really quickly. And if you could help uh, share my screen, uh, Ben, at this point, please. So um, this is just really quickly, just to show you if you ever wanted to, to share it with staff, uh, the power of Twitter. Um, I have to give you a, a slight proviso on this example because I actually thought about it, it took time. Uh, Carol Schiffman's actually my wife. Uh, so she put it out really quickly. So I follow her already. She asked, does anyone know an app that will show a tangent and a slope given a curve and point? Uh, I just jumped in really quickly. Um, I tagged uh, Alec Kuros. Uh, he suggests uh, Desmos.com. I'm forwarded it back and forth. And actually, I'll give you the time uh, start, 2.27 in the afternoon. And as you go through and you see everyone that starts to contribute, uh, some other ideas, it reaches out, Matthew uh, uh, Matthew Pierce jumps in, uh, that's forward along with somebody else that I follow, uh, and then lo and behold, at 304, Desmos itself has now joined the conversation and provided a direct link that answered the question. So uh, Peter Newberry uh, uh, summed it up quite nicely, uh, um, just 37 minutes from first request to help from Desmos itself, the power of Twitter indeed. 
So that's a really good example of how you can use uh, Twitter as an instructional leader to find some of those answers that uh, our teachers are looking for. So that works out really good. You could also use the uh, CC function if you wanted to uh, tag somebody else to pass that message along for you as well. I'm just waiting for the presentation to pop back up here on the screen. Um, Patrick? Yep, so uh, that's a great uh, kind of segue into this, Greg, which is the power of the hashtag. And so in the uh, chat, I've just put a link. Um, for those people that are new to Twitter, um, one of the easiest things to do is if you just go to Twitter and type in a hashtag, or even if you just, you don't even have to have a Twitter account. If you just Google uh, a hashtag and then the word Twitter, it'll so take you to this page. And so uh, maybe if we, um, if you share my screen again, Ben, I'll show you of, uh, what ran, this one looks like. We uh, ran uh, an evening of talks, uh, basically modeled after Ignite here in Peel. We just called it Peel Spark. So we use that hashtag uh, to follow the conversation all night. So Peel uh, people were adding Peel Spark to their tweets. So and then uh, I showed it. Uh, as what an you should be looking at now is the Ontad Leaders. It's a great resource um, for hashtag uh, your tweets and into so, a story that you can embed uh, in your website. I just went and typed uh, Twitter uh, hashtag Ontad Leaders, That's where the power and this is what comes up. From. You have it a choice between do, uh, looking at just, uh, uh, what the top Twitter, tweets are. It's Instagram, um, it's Facebook, that are using that hashtag, media. and you can scroll through them. So it's a really good way for you to you can look at the live feed and see what the most recent tweets are. The other one I like to look at is the photos of the media, and you can scroll through and see what people have been sharing on that. And then share so that it's an easy later. way to follow uh, we use, uh, here, uh, what's been uh, happening in that hashtag. Pass proud hashtag, and that's where it, we just share all the good back learning to the, things uh, that are uh, going on in our school at the same time. So that's taking uh, Twitter, uh, combining it with Storify, and using hashtags to really produce uh, something that's pretty impactful. I know that um, uh, Storify's we share out, uh, trustees have come up and said how much they appreciate uh, uh, those. They had no idea that that happened at Alternative School on our board. So it's a, a really good way to expand the learning. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, I'm here. Just uh, you can go ahead. Um, we're going to uh, speed along here. Another one uh, is TAC. 
Um, really good way to take that uh, bulletin that you do, your newsletter that you send home with report cards, or you email so the next, out, um, and make it more interactive. The next slide is um, uh, I know our director uh, Paperly, which is another um, our tool to curate the uh, content. So you put out a percentage um, of parents when you, uh, when you get a chance, if you come back to this slide deck and clicked really on uh, Paperly, uh, you walk around the corner, the image in this, garbage in this can slide, what you would see is a curation of all the Twitter traffic or the hashtags. Uh, of our school board. So uh, I use it as well, just um, when you create the, the paperly so account, you, on that image, you say, I uh, want tack, all the tweets that have a certain hashtag or from a certain PL user. On Monday, and what it does is it just the grabs them all and puts them into a newspaper. Two years ago, so I went so back you can have that automatically published daily or weekly. So we have schools that uh, put uh, it on autopilot, that, uh, and they just say, um, uh, "Here's our school Will hashtag." Uh, article and, uh, on paperly uh, goes out and creates and their uh, a newspaper with headings, and I used, uh, grabs all the Twitter traffic, puts it into a newspaper, and automatically to, uh, sends notifications our, uh, out either by Twitter or by uh, direct email to a list uh, that of people there. that so you have or people that have subscribed to your paper. Patrick had already mentioned that you can go and see. Uh, the global citizenship right, uh, resources that people had already started doing uh, later on and come back to that as well. Um, everything we've been doing here today has really been building our footprint, being a good digital citizen, and it's everything that we do is going to form that. So it's up to us to try to start taking control of it uh, as we go through. And it's a good point to remind uh, our students of <coughs> at the same time. Um, some really quick ones as educators that you can do. Uh, just to start establishing your own, so it's you that controls what comes up when you search Google. I'm fortunate enough that I'm not the most famous Greg Pearson in the world. Uh, there's a British footballer that seems to get way more hits on Google than I ever do, so I'm not that concerned about it. But you can create your about.me uh, profile, link it to all your other social media accounts as well. So that's just another simple way that you can spend some time to create your uh, digital uh, footprint as well. Um, as far as... Um, a really good way and I, uh, for creating your footprint is the idea of curation. We know that uh, tons of information comes flying at you, great articles from Twitter, uh, gets posted on blogs and things like that. Um, sometimes I'm very skeptical about uh, what I'm going to uh, actually tweet out. And you want to make sure you're putting out some good stuff when you're curating because you're putting your name behind it and saying, go read this article, go check out this resource. Uh, save this blog and that type of idea. So it's very important that you curate uh, uh, what you're actually doing. Multiple uh, platforms to do that. Uh, a lot of our students love using Pinterest. <coughs> I used to use uh, Scoop It. Um, what I've switched to now, just because it's so simple, is uh, Digo. And really what it's talking about is making uh, bookmarks on the go, uh, social bookmarking, uh, research and knowledge sharing. And I use that to share resources out with staff. Uh, ben, if you could uh, share my uh, screen, please. Thank you. Just here's an example of uh, what my Digo page looks like. Um, I've got it all hooked up with another uh, uh, if, um, what's it called now? Uh, if then, then that. Um, it sets up the recipes for me as I'm curating. So I've got all these resources tagged with uh, custom tags. So I can share these with my teachers if they want to go and find something on leadership or technology, uh, social emotional growth, talk about mindset or 21st century learning. All the resources uh, are here. So it's a really good way just to show people what you're interested in, what you're reading. For me, this is great. When I found an article, I really like it. And if I want to use it at a PL day later on, like the Will Richardson story, this is exactly what I, I did. I went back to my Digo library. There's the link. What's even better, here I am at my desktop sharing it with you. I've got Digo on my phone, Digo on my uh, laptop, and Digo on my iPad at the same time. So it's a really good resource. Um, you can just click on, here's uh, leadership, and it's all sorted by different articles that are worthwhile and uh, need to take a, a good time to take a look at. So you want to make sure you filter through those and curate some good content for uh, your staff members uh, to see and look at. Really quickly about uh, what can you contribute on Twitter? Um, that um, uh, Twitter is the awesomer machine that uh, Patrick had tweeted out and I made that image. One of the easiest ways for me to contribute initially in a Twitter conversation or to put some content out there 
was to take things that I had read and go, I'm going to put that to an image. Um, and one of the best uh, uh, tools for doing that, as far as when you're mobile and you're on your phone, is an app called uh, WordSwag. It's just simple. Uh, it has a gallery of items. You can insert your text, and then uh, it creates the image, and you can share it right out on Twitter really, really quickly. So WordSwag's really good, and I've actually just shown you a quick example of something that I put out uh, a while back just about accepting the status quo. So really neat ways just to produce that content for yourself. WordSwag's just gone through a huge update, and actually it was a little bit of excitement between an ITRT here and me sharing it because uh, I love creating these things. And I'll put them right there as part of my own learning uh, when I'm at workshops and seminars and uh, keynotes about what my key rememberings are for those sessions. Um, the next resource that I'm going to share with you is uh, Canva. It's a fantastic resource. There's an iPad app for it, and it's a desktop resource to create uh, images for yourself. You can create Twitter posts, presentations right in it, heading, uh, headers for uh, your Twitter profile, your Facebook page, tons of examples for you to use. So it's really good for creating those custom images. And actually, Canva is uh, the tool that I use to create that image uh, that I shared with uh, Patrick on Twitter. What I really like about Canva, though, is as far as your digital footprint and creating those individual images, much like WordSwag does, for Canva, what I like about it is it actually creates um, a profile page for you that you can share as well. So if I could uh, share my screen again, Ben, just really quickly show you. Um, and again, it's linked uh, in the uh, presentation. Here's my uh, Canva uh, profile page. So any image that I want, I've made public and they're available for others to see. I send my teachers to it. Really good to see where I'm coming from, the direction that I have, uh, some slides that I've created. I've made full presentations in Canva as well. <clears throat> some really good examples that I've shared on Twitter, and I've used it to kind of push my uh, learning agenda here at school uh, with staff as well. So it's a really good resource. Um, high quality images as well. Uh, this is the example for today. Um, I created this. Uh, technology won't help get rid of your problems, and it's certainly going to magnify them for you. So uh, ideas like that are easily shareable. So it's really good that way. So I really enjoy using Canva and developing a, a profile for myself online as well. Great. Thanks, Greg. So the last kind of uh, item we're going to look at for um, global citizenship is this idea of the blog. And uh, what it comes down to for us is about learning and leading in a visible way. And so there are uh, lots of opportunities. Uh, there's, uh, if you want to check out this uh, blog from uh, Peel, they've done something that a, a few boards have done and more are catching on is this uh, project where you uh, open up the blog to uh, either the entire system or just to students or to staff where they they blog about their learning on a daily basis so they provide opportunities for uh, students and staff to have a, a larger audience for their writing uh, but it's an opportunity to share things that are happening in the system and the the best ones are the ones where the uh, blog is open to students to share their learning every day it's uh, that audience factor is um, you can't really um, you know, overestimate how powerful that is. And then the um, the next slide is just a copy of uh, another blog. So this one is mine, but it's um, what I find interesting about blogging is um, we're all busy. We've all got so many things on the go. Uh, I blog uh, better when there's a prompt or when I'm with a group and we're talking about an issue and someone prompts me to to write a post. Um, left to my own devices, I I um, you know, store all kinds of uh, started blogs, but that the ones that never get finished. But if somebody is there to support you and prompt you, um, that makes a huge difference. And then ne the next one is a great example of a collaboration where the people at Asamuk have built this kind of uh, platform where leaders from all over can share their learning. Uh, and they do a lot of great work around getting um, administrators and school leaders um, together on different projects and they do what Greg and I talked about early in the webinar is they will go right back to the beginning for you and and start you off at the beginning and do um, you know like a 10 day kind of little uh, either challenge or workshop around a tool and get you started so if you haven't gone to Asamuk uh, that's a great place to start yeah they did Patrick um, I think it was last year the 10 days of learning Twitter I think it was last year I had I think 
uh, four or five staff that told me officially, yeah, I did that, that was awesome. So it's really good learning opportunities. It doesn't just have to be for admin, it's uh, just system level leadership, some really good quality stuff coming out of there. Uh, Mark Carbone and uh, Donna Miller Fry have done some fantastic work in getting that going uh, initially and all the others that have jumped on as well. Um, we've already talked about uh, some of the power of the hashtag. Uh, came out of the initial institute uh, two years ago. Uh, definitely take a look at the on ed leaders hashtag. That's the one that uh, Patrick mentioned earlier this evening when he showed you how to simply search uh, through Twitter. Another great way to get connected and see what's going on uh, even more so internationally is the connected principles chat found at CP chat. And uh, more recently with uh, George Kuros's new book, some really good stuff going on about uh, innovators mindset. Um, so that's another good way to uh, get connected and see what's going on uh, around the world for us uh, as far as educators and leaders. Uh, really quickly, as we start to uh, wrap up for this evening, a um, reminder of uh, next webcast. Uh, hopefully if uh, Patrick and I uh, didn't completely uh, uh, bore you senseless or wonder why you wasted your Tuesday afternoon, you'll be willing to sign back up again for uh, Patrick and I's next session on May the 10th on assessing and monitoring the effectiveness of uh, technology-enabled learning. Um, again, you can do that through all the notifications that are coming out through uh, your uh, representation as well. So hopefully you see some of these names again uh, on uh, Tuesday, May the 10th. And uh, what we're going to leave you with uh, today is a, uh, some learning challenges uh, for you to take away. And we've talked about some of the tools today. Uh, if you can do all four, that's absolutely fantastic. That would be your four plus, 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 plus. If you want to do three, two, one, it's up to you. If you don't want to do any, that's your choice as well. Um, what we're just saying is take the opportunity, get on Twitter, try calling out someone uh, uh, on Twitter and say, hey, check out the slide deck from tonight or check out this resource. Um, share out that, uh, the forms uh, that we've done tonight, especially the um, document that uh, Patrick put together uh, with Docapender and what other tools we can use in uh, building the competencies that are in the uh, ministry document. Uh, take some time, download the WordSwag app, download the Canva app or create your profile and create your first Canva image and then share it. Create your first WordSwag and then share it out there. Um, and then uh, definitely Take a look at any of the resources we talked about, whether it's Digo, and just start posting one thing to it today. That's all it takes. Any of the sharing that you're going to do, just use the on ed leaders hashtag, and then we can all follow along in each other's learning uh, as we go today. Patrick, any uh, closing words? No, I just uh, thinking that uh, I'm going to have to have another look at uh, Adobe Connect and see what happened to my... Uh, my video and uh, I got booted out uh, once today. And I'm, yep. I'm sure that wasn't you or Ben that did that to me. Um, really uh, enjoyed getting ready for today and I'm really interested to see what uh, is in the collaborative documents. Can't wait to have a look and see uh, how people are using tools in ways that I've never thought of. Um, so I'm really looking forward to those documents. Yeah, that was awesome too. Like just uh, the doc appender is not something I'd used before. And as Patrick and I were talking, he brought it up. So it was uh, just fantastic learning for myself as well. So really good to start the sharing today and hopefully keep it going in the community that we've got.